we are living in a state of emergency. That much seems true and increasingly always true. How do we make sense of our current constitutional emergency in light of previous emergencies or those happening elsewhere? Many have turned to similar situations in Hungary or Poland. I suggest instead that we turn east to India. Like Israel, India is also going through a severe erosion of its democracy and the rise of authoritarian leadership, often called an undeclared emergency. However, to understand today's emergency in India and in Israel and their dangers, I want to take us back to another emergency in India's history. My name is Ayelit Benishais and I specialize in the intersection of politics and literature in the post-colonial world. I read fiction to understand the world. My just published book, Genres of Emergency, deals with what might be the most momentous political event you have never heard of. In June 1975, Indira Gandhi, the third prime minister of India, not the Mahatma Gandhi, imposed a state of emergency throughout the country in response to what, to what she called a conspiracy against her. Convicted of corruption and threatened by growing opposition and mass demonstration, Gandhi acted ruthlessly. Basic civil liberties were suspended, thousands were detained without trial, censorship was imposed and corruption reached new heights. Surprisingly lifted after 20 months, the emergency became an anomaly in India's democratic history, <clears throat> all but forgotten for many years. Except, I discovered, from fiction, which does not forget. This group of novels written about the emergency are the subject of my research. Why, I wondered, did these novels return to the emergency repeated, but long after, repeatedly, but long after it had ended and was forgotten? Let's look at one example, a fictional spy thriller set in the emergency called The Garland Keepers, which all opens with a fictional author's note. This story is not about the 1975 emergency, but a fictional one. But since all fits of national epilepsy must show some common symptoms, some of the events described in, my, in the book may have a passing resemblance to the days of that earlier seizure. This would be no more than a coincidence. Coincidence, it was not. Why then insist on its fictionality? We think of the emergency as a one-off crisis, but the author refers to it here as a fit of national epilepsy, implying that the illness is endemic, repetitive, and constant, even if its crises seem to be random seizures. Indeed, after reading a wide range of texts, I suggest that the emergency was not only singular, but also of a piece with India's past and future, crisis and continuity. So what's in it for us? As we in Israel take to the streets, we might question our own emergency and ask how it is not only a crisis, but also a continuity with our own troubled pasts. One wonders, what kind of Israeli polity is being imagined through the flags that we carry and the slogans that we shout? Who is part of the we that is created by our sense of emergency and who is not? If we are arguing to, for a return to democracy, what does that mean for those for whom this has never been and continues not to be a democracy? In Israel, as in India, we need to take our crisis seriously, but keep our eyes firmly on our continuities. We must not let the sense of crisis hide or normalize our ongoing emergencies and inequalities. Our democracies and our lives depend on it. That and on learning politics from fiction. Thank you.